What's up guys, Jacob here, and today we're going to be talking about my short films Anomaly, Normality, and Conformity, all making up the 15 minute short film Mona, which you're watching now. And this is all going to be in one take, so boy, I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share some behind the scenes stuff with you guys, and just kind of as a thank you for helping us reach uh, 10,000 views here on YouTube. That may not be a lot to a lot of people, but it's a lot to me. It's more than I ever thought that I would get on this short film. Now the first thing that I want to discuss when talking about Anomaly, which is the first part of the short, Ben and Josh had no idea how many shots were just going to be of them walking through the woods. So it's just like kind of crazy to see that although we did like 20 different shots, only just a select few made it into the final film, which is natural, it just happens, but they didn't realize what the heck they were doing. And so I was telling them, no guys, trust me, it'll be really cool, just, just believe me. And sure enough, after they saw it, they were like, hey, you were right, that's kind of cool. Um, Ben actually had that really rad, uh, mustache that you're seeing. That's actually a real mustache. He grew that, so props to Ben for being able to do that, because Lord knows I can't. But, um, Ben did that for the short film, and we, he showed up like that. I'd never seen Ben with a mustache, but I was like, dude, just keep it. That's gonna fit in with the aesthetic so much. I love it. And as for Josh, Josh and I went shopping one night, and he got the flannel shirt and the jacket that he's wearing now. And I was like, look, you're going to wear red because you're the more aggressive character. Ben's the kind of the more calm character, so I want him in the blue and kind of the more uh, muted colors, if you will. I just felt like that would suit better and kind of contrast between the two characters and, you know, how they're acting between one another, even though they're both detectives, which you can clearly see that they are. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of some little tiny symbolism that I threw in there. Um, I don't even know if they know that, but... If you didn't know that, you know it now. So it's kind of cool. And it took so many shots for Ben and Josh to do this. If you've seen the blooper reel, then you know Ben and Josh were just, like, laughing so much. It's a lot of fun making these short films. Like, you have no idea what's going to go in it, what's not. And when you say a line, like, 40 times over and over and over again, and you keep messing up, it's a little bit frustrating. But at the same time, it's so much fun just, like, going back and forth. I, I love it. I absolutely do. And the bickering scene, this was originally about to be just like a bunch of quick little cuts so that, you know, it intensifies the moment. But I did one take because I was like, hey, Spielberg does that kind of stuff. And I felt like it would be kind of cool to just like shake the camera around, kind of like not Michael Bay, but you kind of know what I'm getting at. That's actually my favorite shot of the short film. And uh, we have the long shot of them running, which I felt would be kind of cool considering the next shot is just a bunch of close ups. And there they go. They're not in the short film anymore. But Ben and Josh really gave their all. They really surprised me. And uh, they did a great job in this. I loved it. <laughs> and now we're getting to the main star of the short film. The short film is named after her, after all. So here we are, introduced to Mona, Rachel's character. Um, Rachel wasn't sure kind of like what this character was in the anomaly but as we explored the character more and more she gave a lot of cool ideas and did a lot of cool things with the character that i didn't expect her to do i didn't know her too well before the short film but we became really good friends same with ben and josh josh i'd been friends with prior and same with ben but it kind of just reinforced our friendship and i made a lot of cool friends in, in the process of making this short film which was really awesome. And now we're in Normality, the second, but technically the first, if you're looking at it chronologically, it really just all depends. And now we have Charles and Meredith, and Charles, the I told him to portray kind of like more of a smart, analytical villain because he is the main antagonist in the short film. He's really just a member of this government side project. And he really pulled it off well. I, I like how he's not super menacing, but he's menacing enough to get the point across, which is what I like. He's kind of almost like Lex Luthor in Batman vs. Superman. And that little, quip of, uh, that little quip of humor that you just saw was my idea. I was like, we kind of have a very serious short, and it's kind of dark. So I was like, we'll just lighten up the colors just a little bit more and add some humor for good measure. And I think it worked and paid off. I really like that shot, too, of Rachel's shadow. I just think it looks really cool. That's just a me thing, though. I also want to take a minute to talk about Meredith. Uh, that's actually Rachel's friend, probably one of her best friends, if not her best friend. And I hadn't, I didn't know her at all before the day that we started filming this. She read the script over a little bit, but you know she didn't know everything, and that's fine. I expect that from making a short film every now and then. Stuff happens, but she really surprised me, and she did a really good job. And um, we actually all went out to eat afterwards, and she turned out to be a really awesome person. So if you're watching this. There you go. 
And that may or may not be a real gun. Um, it definitely wasn't loaded if it was real. I will say that. But other than that, you get the point. <laughs> and I like the shot of how he's counting down. And, you know, it's just like a bunch of quick little stuff. And then we have Rachel's hand sticking out. And this is at one of my absolute favorite moments in the short film. You can barely hear the gunfire. But if you hear it, you're like, oh, no, what, what's going to happen? <laughs> And this might be my favorite shot in the entire short, or in normality at least, where Charles looks behind him in one take and sees the body of his assistant Marcy, who is an Easter egg. Her name is an Easter egg to Lex Luthor's assistant Marcy in DC Comics, because I'm a total geek and I like Easter eggs, and I was like, hey, I'll throw that in there for, you know, for fun. <laughs> See if anybody notices. Not that anybody has noticed yet, but if you did catch that, good for you. <laughs> That cut was a little bit jarring. I did learn a lot about editing in the process of making this short film, and I'm not going to act like it's perfect by any means, but I really had a lot of fun making it. And when you have a lot of fun making something, it really says something about, you know, how your project's going to turn out. If you're not having fun making it, it might not be good, but we had a ton of fun making this. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to show that there could be more like Rachel's character, because she mentions that in the next short film. And really, this is her first exposure to that. Like, I feel like it makes him more of an interesting villain. And if we ever were to do a sequel to this, which I'm not sure yet, we might, hint, hint. Um, I'd want Charles to kind of be the main antagonist again, because he did such a great job before. And now we're coming to an end. Actually, Anomaly and uh, Normality, these two short films were shot nearly, near, very near uh, the same location uh, between one another one was on the right side of my backyard the other was on the left you kind of can see where I'm coming from and uh, per Mount Virginia the title card you just saw when we're entering uh, conformity now um, per Mount Virginia is actually a reference to a project that I had going on with a friend for a while called per Mount it was like a little kind of radio series that we were doing you can listen to the full episodes on SoundCloud we had to cancel it because he was moving to America but I just felt like it'd be a cool little nod you know because it was about a forest and this is my favorite shot in the short film I will say that that is hands down my favorite shot that I got out of all of this and now we have uh, Rachel waiting for Nathan to drive up in my Jeep uh, Nathan was kind of fired up about driving the Jeep um, I was like look man you're this is my baby, all right? Just be careful with it. And he was, thankfully. We didn't get, you know, any crashes or anything, but we kept going back and forth down this dirt road, and you can kind of see it in some of the window shots when they're uh, in the car. But, yeah, we just went back and forth on this, like, little dirt road that we found, and it was pretty cool. But, yeah, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do to get a shot in. <laughs> And I actually kind of like the little cuts, how you can see different locations out of the windows, because I do feel like it makes it feel like they're driving and she's not directly responding to his questions, keeping up with the ambiguity of it all. So I really like that a lot. And here we go. Now we're going into that country music and the Boba Fett, because I love Star Wars. And that was actually in my Jeep, and I almost took it out, but I was like, nope, I want that in there for a reason, because I love Star Wars. And I thought of Nathan's character, David, and I was like, you know what, David probably would have that in his car. He's probably a Star Wars fan, too, so that's that's how I roll. <laughs> and Nathan really hadn't been in a short film before this. This was his first short, and he actually did a pretty solid job. Um, I'm friends with him and his brothers. They're really awesome people. And Nathan agreed to be in the short film, and I was like, yes, because he was my uh, first pick for the character. And uh, he really did a good job. He has a lot of charisma that he gave to the character, and I really adore that. <laughs> it was so rough filming these shots in the back of my car, mainly just because it was me and my friend Philip. Philip Langston did the audio production for the short film, and basically we were cramped in the back of my car while Rachel and Nathan were in the front seats. And I was just trying to get different angles as best as I could. The road turned out to be a lot bumpier than we thought it would be because it is a dirt road for the most part. And it was gra it turned into gravel. So <laughs> there's not really much that I can do at that point in time. But I was trying to keep the camera as steady as I could because I had a pretty terrible rig. <laughs> now I have gotten some issues about the audio in the short film when it was first released. And I think I fixed it a little bit in the Mona completed version, which you're watching now. And the reasoning behind that was because I had no idea my mic, my shotgun mic that I used for the short film was breaking. Um, there was some stuff going on with the wires inside, and it was just completely busted. Then the battery was almost dead that I didn't even know it took batteries, so, yep. But, um, 
But yeah, I had to get a new mic after filming the short film because I was like, crap, I can't film anything again until I get a new mic because this one's completely busted and it picked up a ton of white noise, which is something that I absolutely hate. And when you're trying to keep, keep a sense of professionalism, it's just really hard to do. And fans of Dystopia, um, that was actually a mirror of a shot in Dystopia, one of my first big short films. And I was like, hey, I can pay tribute since I'm using the same house, which is my grandparents' house. And they have a really cool kind of aesthetic thing going on inside, which I love. So I was like, you know, I just like the colors, how it's kind of like dark and orange. And it was about Thanksgiving time, which is why all those decorations are on the table. But I was like, you know, it would be cool to kind of release conformity around Thanksgiving because, you know, it's just, what are you thankful for? You're thankful for family, you're thankful for friends. And she's kind of getting back into the world at this point. It just felt right. And I didn't plan on it, but I was like, you know what? Let's go with it. I think it would be great and it would add to the tone of the movie. So that's what we did. And Nathan saying that line about dropping out of college, um, that kind of came from the heart. <laughs> Not that I am going to drop out of college. I wouldn't do that. Stay in school, kids. But, uh, yeah, I wrote that kind of just as a little jab and for fun because I thought it would be funny. <laughs> Whether it is, that's up to you. But I thought it was. And I like how Rachel keeps tapping on the glass. Like, that was kind of an idea that she kind of came up with, too. Like, what if I keep tapping on the glass because I'm nervous? And I'm like, I like that. So we did it. And I was moving seat from seat during these shots because I, I didn't know how to get a very interesting shot from a table, just dialogue between two characters without doing one shot. And if you were to do the whole thing in one shot, it just wouldn't work. So I was like, well, I want to have a few cuts here and there, make it look a little bit different. And I feel like we did a good job of that. But I sometimes wish I could have gone back and maybe fixed it up just a little bit more. But I like what we have. I think it turned out pretty good. Conformity is my favorite, if anybody's wondering. Um what well, my personal favorite of the short films are. So, there you go. Conform deep. That's it. And now we finally get the thing that's been appearing in all the other two short films. Uh, the Rumble, her superpower, essentially. Um, people have asked me, what's Mona's power? Was she born with it? Yes, she was born with it in the story. That's my idea. Um, she was born with it in the story, and that's kind of her superpower. She can make things rumble and stuff with her hands. Like, she can create earthquakes. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I, I like that for her character, because her character is very unstable and doesn't know where she's supposed to be. She doesn't know whether to trust people, whether to not trust people. And, you know, earthquakes are very, like, shaky and stuff. And I was like, you know what, I, I just feel like it'd be right to give her that power, because one, that's you don't see that power very often, and two, it just works well with your character, which is something that I wanted to do. And now we kind of have Rachel and Nathan just continuing to talk. There's not much to talk about during the scene. It's just dialogue talking about her wanting to get back into the world. And she's like, do you, is there a way to do both? And he's like, well, there's only one way to find out. And that's where our story ends. They go out on an adventure together. And she's going to hide, but kind of conform back into the world and enter back into society, which she's been away from for who knows how long. We don't know. It's never really explained how long she was at the facility with Charles's character, Hector Curtis. So, we don't know. But, it might be kind of interesting to find out. Maybe we will one day. You know. And my Jeep, once again. <laughs> Man, I really love how I gave off certain details about my car. <laughs> so, if any of you uh, Frame by Frame fans, all 285 of you at the time of this commentary, see a great Jeep in South Carolina, look out for me. <laughs> And these shots were actually, whenever we were leaving that road on the countryside, I was like, hey, that's cool. And this shot, the first time that we see Mona basically is in the dark and afraid, the last shot is, of, is basically of her in the sunlight and optimistic. And now she's hopeful again, and that's kind of where we're going to leave her character as of now. And here we have all the credits. I really want to thank everybody who was involved with this project. I can't believe we hit over 10,000 views on this short film. It really blows my mind. Um... Jacob Hill did a fantastic job writing Normality. He's a really great friend of mine. Subscribe to Shadow Blade Film Production and Jacob Hill. Link will be in the description. If you don't see it here, it will be in the description for the Mona Black and White edition, which came out today. And I also want to thank Philip Langston, who really did the audio. He's a really great friend of mine. I've been friends with him since middle school, and he's just absolutely awesome. He helped me with the audio, and I can't thank him enough for that. And thanks to Rachel and everybody else, and Ben and Josh, and 
Charles and Meredith and Nathan, everybody who helped out with this short film. It really means the world to me. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe frame by frame. Remember the name, and I'll see you in the next frame by frame film review. Thank you guys so much. You mean the world to me.